Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Envious Ally the Hunter for um, Envious, and yeah, I'm just going over really quickly the Shadow of Olympus patch notes. I'm gonna explain some of the balance changes, the skins, the cool shit that's coming out next patch, and the new game mode Clash, which, uh, in my opinion, is just another. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how I feel about it. I wish they uh they change it, but we'll go into detail about that in a bit. Uh, first skin that came out was the Zeus SWC skin. It's actually a really cool skin. Um, when you throw the shield out, it makes like a clank sound when you auto attack it. So I actually really like that skin. I'm definitely gonna get that when the patch actually uh comes out. And then they have the Curse Agni, which I mean I don't really care. It's just Curse Agni, like whatever, right? Like, it, it, they have already a Curse Apollo, so I guess a Curse Agni, whatever. Uh, then the um, convention 2016 Anubis, it looks like just another recolor. So, I'm like, eh, about it. I don't really care about the convention 2016 Anubis. I guess it's just something to give away. And then we have the Shadow Skin, so there's... On her Isis Capri Thor and Tear, each one you have to get through clan personal honor, and you can spend that on your clan chests, which basically have recolors and shadow skins and boosters. Uh, out of all of them, I, I found it bugged in the PTS, so I didn't get a chance to check out all the skins. But the ones that I did see, uh, they're pretty cool. The loading, uh, the loading card animations are sick, as you can see right here. And overall, I I like it. I think it's sweet. And then we have the new Athena Mastery skin. Mm, that leg. But yeah, no, I, I thought this was actually pretty cool. I'd like Apollo down. And yeah. Yeah, it was, it was good. It was good. And then um, moving forward, the new voice pack, updated cards. The, the Bacchus Christmas skin got updated. Okay, pretty cool stuff. Uh, now the clan rewards. So basically, um, the store contains like five chests. You got to level it up by buying it through your clan honor you don't have to spend money on this this is more of just clan rewards because i think her biggest complaint throughout the plebs was just like once you're in a clan and you actually get clan rewards there's nothing to actually use or like there's no actual reward so now that I, I guess they're just trying to add stuff for the people that um you know give a fuck about clans in smite so yeah there you go you can do that so now um different achievements okay so that's that's pretty cool and then, okay, so here's pretty much the meat of the patch to get the item changes. Frostbound Hammer, reduce the health. Perfect. I think this item already has too much health on it. 400 to 325, whatever, right? So, yeah, this is basically going to help. Like, it, it was kind of ridiculous that an, an item that every auto attack you slowed someone had 400 health. Like, 400 is such a large amount of health to have for no reason. Like, it's just like... I'm down. I'm down with that change. Like, there was no reason for a fucking anybody to have 400 health with an attack damage item. I mean, like, yeah, it's supposed to give you extra health and it's for tanky warriors or whatever. It's just, like, 400 health, man. That's It's just way too much. Hardwood Amulet, uh, reduce the magical protection from 60 to 50. Okay. Um, I would like to see them touch elsewhere. I don't know why they're reducing the protections on Hardwood Amulet. Same thing with Sovereignty. Um... Skipping over the next two real quick. Sovereignty reduced the physical protection from 55 to 50. It's it's okay. I think they're trying to touch a little bit on supports without actually changing too much of supports. But those are generally the core support items. And I guess it's going to make support squishier by a little bit. But uh, I don't think that was the major problem. But whatever, right? Like, I don't, I don't mind. Whatever. Is that going to change anything, really? Supports are still going to build Heartward, and they're still going to build Sovereignty, and they're still going to be the core items. They're just not going to be as tanky. Whatever. Mystical Mail, uh, huge nerf. Huge, 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 huge. Um, reduce the health from 300 to 220. I like this change. I think this is a huge change. Uh, just because, I mean, I still think people are probably going to default and build Mystical Mail. I think the passive is still going to be good. But now you can't be invincible while doing that much damage. I mean, Mystical Mail still brings a poop ton of protections overall, and it still has 220 health. So you're still going to be really tanky. It's just, it shouldn't be, you know, the only physical uh, protection item to set you off for the next couple levels so you can just dominate your lane. 
I guess the, the idea behind this is that if you build this item, you don't instantly dominate your lane, because that's pretty much how soul lane matchups go. The second you get Mystical Mail done, and if you can get Mystical Mail done before your opponent, you just win lane. That's it, you just, you just win. There's nothing you can do about it, you just... That's it, you just run over the other guy because he cannot fight you because not only do you have physical protection galore, you have so much health, and you pretty much do more damage than them now because they can't out-damage you with Mystical Mail, and you pretty much, like, most warriors would have Blue Stone Warriors have you done by that time. Yeah, dude. I think I like this change. And then a Pestilence buff. Uh, from 20 to 25% healing reduction, uh, maybe it could have got buffed a little bit more, but I guess it's a good start. We can start seeing a little bit of uh, the tone up on the healing. I'm, I'm surprised that there weren't more item changes, like Soul Eater could definitely have been changed. I still think Soul Eater gives way too much health. Lifesteal still hasn't been touched uh, for Hunters, and... Also, like, they haven't really touched anything on, like, Titan's Bane or Jotun's Wrath being too potent or any of the other CDR-based items. Like, Shoes of Focus, I think, is really good. Um, there's Mail of Renewal that still needs to get touched. But overall, I think this is a, a step in the right direction. It's definitely not bad. These changes aren't going to change the meta too much. And I think that's pretty much the goal because we have two lands about to come up. We have Worlds and the Super Regionals. I'm pretty sure Harris doesn't want to fuck the meta right before a huge land so i'm i'm a fan of these changes and then for god changes we have athena now i like this because this should tone down i mean athena's still gonna be ridiculously overpowered but this should tone down the early game of her a little bit and pretty much it, she's gonna ult around the map anyway but now she's not gonna do it as much a uh, huge 20 seconds instead of a flat uh 90 second uh cdr buff it's it's like 20 seconds, you have to scale, once you scale up your ult to like level 20, you get the 90 seconds back, so, I like this, uh, you can't basically fly around the map for free anymore with Athena, I think it's a step in the right direction, I, I think Athena's still gonna be strong, but you can tell with, uh, the way these changes are, these are very slight changes, they're trying not to fuck anything, to the point of no return, they're trying, Hires is trying to very gradually switch, like, some of the OP shit, down a little bit so i I'm a, I'm a fan of these changes right now uh bludgeon fix Bologna's t position when switching the hammer while getting okay whatever i wish there was a nerf but whatever uh Giannis, this is huge i i love this well actually believe it or not this is actually a buff for the first like couple levels but besides that like this is still a pretty huge buff i mean nerf to Yanis. Yannis and his allies can no longer enter portals Portals while stunned, crippled, or rooted. If the portal was already out on the wall, and let's say you got stunned right next to it, you would just fly through anyway, but now you are not permitted to go through anymore, so that's that's a big change. Like, thankfully, now Cupid counters Yannis, so there's a lot of things that counter Yannis now, but Cupid's going to be good, Poseidon, anything that can pretty much stop him from taking his portal... So, I think this is a pretty big change. A lot of people are sleeping on this change. This is probably one of the biggest changes because a lot of the times it's Yanis just like ults or like he portals and he's just fucking stuck, right? And, and I mean, not, not fucking stuck. He just fucking gets away for free. But now you're just going to be fucking stuck. Like, you're just done. It's, you, you pretty much have to be a little bit more careful on positioning. You can't just willy-nilly portal everywhere and get away for free because your portal's on a two-second cooldown. Now you have to actually think a little bit while you're uh, using your Yanis abilities. And Threshold, oh, jeez, I'm so, I wish they took out the movement speed portion of this, but this is good enough to reduce the phase slow from 20 to 25, scaling upwards to 25% of all ranks. So now, by mid to late game, you're not getting absolute, like, I don't know about you guys, but when you get hit with Threshold, because it covers up the whole fucking map, pretty much, I mean, it's a pretty big ability, and it's a pretty big line ability, so you're, you're guaranteed to go over at least once or twice during out the match. And, yeah, dude, it feels like you are, your legs got chopped off. Like, that's how slow you get when you get hit by Threshold. So, 25% of all ranks, a little bit more manageable. Thank God. Now, hopefully, do something with the extra movement speed. The team-wide speed buff needs to go, but that's a story for another day. Capri, redu uh, increase the mana cost. Okay. More Capri nerfs. I'm down. Fuck Capri. Rama, um, fix Rama, unable to see basic attacks if running out of mana while Astro Strike is active, okay. Rolling Assault, fix bonus damage not applying if fired at pl point blank range, okay. That's, that's pretty neat. Astro Barrage, fix initial while Rama will become knock up slash back immune, okay. 
Alright, so um, pretty much like bug changes. Reduce the mana cost from blah 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 blah. Okay, Scylla got buffed, but it's not good enough to really make her viable in competitive play. You might see a little bit more in ranked. Fuck Scylla. I don't, I don't, I don't care for this change. I still think she's gonna be garbage. So, fuck Scylla. So Hong Kong. This is a huge change. This is pretty much, I'm pretty sure you're not going to see too much Sun Wukong just because of his early landing phase being that much more abusable. And that's great. At the same time, um, I don't think it was pretty much the core of Sun Wukong's problems. I think Sun Wukong has too many spammable abilities with the, the blue stone pendant being around. Being able to apply that makes him really annoying to deal with. Not to mention his ult is kind of bullshit, but... I mean, I, I don't I don't agree with the mana cost increase, even though that is going to help, especially if you don't have blue buff. Like, let's say you get blue buff taken from you, having magic co uh, kudro cost like 90 mana, you know, you're not going to be spamming it as often. And increasing the mana cost of Master's Will, you're not going to be spamming that as often either. But reducing the starting health, that's a big deal. That's that's still a big deal. But you're still going to see Zone Kong, just not as often, maybe not as high as a priority, but you're still going to be around, that's for sure. And then Zeus, um... Aegis Assault often moves too fast for players. Okay, so this is probably just for newer players, um, you know, not getting hit with a billion damage of poke, and they're like, what the fuck, man? So, yeah, that's pretty much the changes. So far, I liked I liked it because it wasn't too hard. It wasn't too thick, but you kind of got the general idea of what Hyrus is going for, which is soft changes all around of, like, you know, certain stuff. I just, um... I wish they'd add a little bit more. Hopefully by next patch we can see some lifesteal changes. But it like you can also tell that Hyrule doesn't want to change too much to fuck up the meta right before a huge land. So expect after Season 2 to see some pretty, pretty big changes, I would imagine. Because these are very soft changes and we have we know Hyrule's for, you know, completely... Like, I've seen them fuck up a god, no problem. So, yeah. Uh, I would imagine after the lands, they probably... Uh, they probably lay it on a little thick. So we'll see until then. But for now, I, I could take these. Well, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you leave a comment if you liked the video. And I'm out. Peace.